Hi, I'm Karen Murphy and I'm the coordinator for our um, orthopedic program here. I'm going to be going through your discharge instructions because you just had your hip replaced. Now I'm starting with the activity. It's very important that you're changing position at least every 45 minutes because the more you don't move, everything tightens and it gets used to not moving and it's harder to move the next time. Now if you're sleeping, that's the exception. You keep on sleeping because that's very good for you as well. Also, doing your exercises twice a day is important, so make sure you're doing that, and some walking. Best thing to get you back to enjoying your life. You do have a few precautions after your surgery. They're called posterior hip precautions. Um, the reason you have these is so that you do not accidentally dislocate your hip or pop it out of the joint while it's in the process of healing. Dr. Spore will let you know when you no longer have these precautions, but it takes a little bit of time. So the precautions are, that you cannot cross your legs at the ankle or at the knees, okay? Keeping your toes pointed forward, we don't want them turning inward or outward too far, and not bending more than 90 degrees. So in other words, sitting in a chair like this is great, but not bending over that far, way too far. Um, so just so you're aware of that, we want you to maintain those. You will be going home with this lovely abductor pillow. Um, it comes in handy because if you're an active sleeper, you can secure these on your legs and that way you won't cross. But you could substitute a regular pillow for it while you're sleeping. That's fine. Or when you're up if you feel you need it. Now, it does come in handy if you're a side sleeper because if you turn the sideways and put this between your legs, it doesn't compress as much as a regular pillow and it keeps those hips in the right spot. You can sleep on either hip, on either side, but generally, it's more comfortable on the hip you did not have surgery. So just something to keep in mind. Now, I'm next going to be talking about your bandage your, or your dressing. You have a dressing on right now like this. It's called an Aquacell. This one is waterproof, and it's meant to be on for seven days from day of surgery. All right. When you remove this dressing seven days after surgery, there's going to be some old drainage under here. I completely expect it. Um, if you are not having any additional drainage coming out, Dr. Spore now wants you to leave it open to air and don't cover it with anything. But if you are still having a little bit of drainage, then he does want you to put a dressing on there to protect it and keep it nice and dry. So if you need one, you're going to be using a Metapor or a coverlet. It comes in a package like this. When you open this up, this is the dressing that is inside of it. It has the tape all built into it around the gauze, so it's a nice sealing type of dressing. Easiest way to do your dressing change is when you're standing, holding on to something, or in bed so everything can be nice and flat. This completely peels off, so the backing, it exposes the tape and the gauze. The gauze then goes over your incision area and then pressing down around the outside on the tape so it secures nicely and you're all set. If you are using this dressing, it needs to be changed once a day until there is no longer drainage and or you see Dr. Spore in the office. Now, if you're using this, you then need to take a piece of Glad Wrap, Saran Wrap, Cling Wrap. Press and Seal actually sticks really good, but any plastic is fine. Cut a piece bigger than the dressing, put it on top, tape around it, take your shower, and then afterwards change the dressing. Now, if it did get a little wet under there, don't worry. Just take a clean towel or washcloth and gently pat dry, but don't touch the incision. I want it to stay nice and dry in there. All right? Clean as possible. So that would be your dressing. Now, again, no lotions or ointments on that incision. When you are looking at that incision, when you're changing a dressing, or now you don't need a dressing, I still want you to look at that incision once a day to make sure everything looks good you're making sure the incision is together, it's not opening up, that there's not an increase in drainage, that there's not foul smelling drainage. So take a good look at that. The skin around it might be a little bit discolored, you might have some bruising, completely normal, but it shouldn't be bright red. It's also going to feel a little bit warmer than your other leg because your body's working at healing this because you just had surgery, but it should not feel hot. If ever there's a question, call Dr. Sporer's office regarding that, okay? So important to know. Now, um, I briefly got into showering is fine to do with this dressing or this one. And we just talked about how you would do it. Or if it's open to air, you're showering and the water and soap run over it, but you're not scrubbing around here. You gingerly pat dry. 
but what you cannot do is take a bath, hot tub, whirlpool, sauna, swimming pool, go in a lake or ocean for a good six weeks. There's a lot of bacteria in all those places and it really does take a good six weeks for that outside incision to be sealed so now you have a barrier and things can't get through to cause an infection. So be cautious on that. Um, other ways to help prevent infection is hand washing is huge. So before somebody's taking off a dressing, even if it's yourself um, or somebody else, or changing it or just looking at it, they should always be washing their hands. Um, anybody and everybody coming over to your house, whether they live there visiting, when they walk in the door, first thing they should do is go to a sink, wash with plain old soap and water, works great, or keep hand sanitizer. All of that works great. You want to avoid sick people because you don't want to catch those germs and you don't want anything to travel to your new hip. Pets are wonderful also, and they make you feel good, so you pet them, but just wash your hands a little bit more because they do carry extra germs. We also want you to check your temperature when you go home twice a day once in the morning and once in the evening. Narcotics can make you sleepy and because of that our bodies are pretty smart and a lot of times they will start increasing your temperature because it's trying to fight off so you don't get sick, something in your lungs. So check your temperature. If you're seeing it starting to go up, you're doing some extra breathing exercises, a good 10 or 20, then recheck your temperature. Sometimes just by doing that your temperature goes right back down to normal as everything's open now in your lungs. But if it doesn't and it gets to be 101, now we're concerned is there an infection and that's a call to Dr. Sporer's office. So that's also very important. Definitely keep using this at home. You know, if you're so long as you're on narcotics, before you're laying down, when you first get up, all of those are important. Now, to keep you comfortable when you leave here, you're going home on some form of narcotic pain medication. Um, there's information listed in your guidebook about that. Please read that and on your discharge instructions. But it's got some side effects to it. Um, side effects like constipation. All right, You want to prevent that. Remember to take those stool softeners and laxatives both so that you're preventing it. Drinking a lot of water, at least six to eight glasses a day. Make sure, um, in addition to that, add high fiber to your diet. Okay, um, But keep an eye on your body if you need to add something more or take something away based on how you're doing. So that's just one of the side effects. Another one is sleepiness that we talked about. So that means when you're getting up, I want you to be careful. Get your balance first before you start walking. Don't move too quickly because all of a sudden the room could spin and we don't want you to lose your balance and fall. So please, slow changes in position. Um, another thing that we're talking about these days is addiction. You hear about it all the time on the news. So it's very important that you are gradually getting off the narcotics as you need less. The narcotic is needed at first because you just had a painful surgery. Um, but the narcotic is ordered every four to six hours as needed. So as you need less, use less. So in other words, four to six hours has passed. You can now take a pain pill. And you're having some pain, but it's not that bad. And it's not going up. Then wait, don't take anything yet. So spreading it out a little bit, or maybe you were taking two pain pills, try one. If you were doing one, try a half. You can substitute Tylenol or acetaminophen for it, no problem. But whatever you're taking for pain, always wait at least four hours in between doses. Dr. Spore sometimes also orders NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, certain ones, maybe ibuprofen. But it will be on your discharge paperwork and your nurse will go over all the specifics so you know exactly what you can take and what you shouldn't take. So always review that if you have a question. Now, in addition to pain medication to keep you comfortable. Um, you might also be using ice. We really encourage it. Take that ice pack home with you. We want you to ice your hip for 20 to 30 minutes at least four to five times a day. More times is fine. But especially after therapy, especially after walking, because it's going to be inflamed and swell a little bit more. That will help keep it calm, calm down a bit. Um, changing position at least every 45 minutes is very important also because otherwise everything stiffens and it hurts more to try and move the next time. So little changes in position are very important for you. And take advantage of distractions. If you like listening to music, reading a book, watching something on TV, if you think about something else, you don't think about where you just had the surgery as much and you don't experience the pain. So take advantage of those things too because they're very valuable. Um, the other medication you will leave here on is some form of anticoagulant or blood thinner. Now you will be on whatever Dr. Spore decides is correct for you and whatever length of time, but it's somewhere generally 
between two and five weeks. So whatever he's ordered and you're going to be taking that. While you're on it, it thins your blood, which means you might bleed easier or bruise easier. So just be a little bit more conscious of that. Um, when you're brushing your teeth, a soft bristle brush is probably a better idea. If you're shaving, you might consider an electric razor, but it's not always necessary. Just be careful. If you accidentally do cut yourself, wash it out really good with soap and water, apply some pressure, and if you're not allergic to antibiotic ointment on a cut is a place I would put it. So kind of keep that one in mind. Um, we want to decrease your risk for infection and on a cut that is a great place to put it. Uh, so pay attention to your whole body though afterwards, again to help keep you as healthy as possible. If it's a cut that looks infected, um, an eye infection, a sore throat, a bladder infection, a fever, you might want to give your primary doctor a call just to describe what's going on. They might need to prescribe an antibiotic for you just to make sure nothing is going to happen and you're not going to get infection and it travels to your hip. But that would be your doctor's call, but you always want to check with them on that. All right. If you also did not have the discussion um, with your surgeon at that first follow-up office visit, one of the things you want to discuss is what needs to happen when I go to the dentist. Um, a few years ago, it would be standard that everybody would get one dose of an antibiotic one hour before you went to the dentist, but there's been a lot of overuse on antibiotics, so it's a little gray. So when you go to that first office visit, which you already have scheduled two weeks after surgery, you're going to discuss that. What is right for you? And he might want you to have it, and he might not, but you're going to have that discussion, so you're prepared about that. Now, I know at your office visits you have those scheduled as a two-week and a six-week follow-up. At those, besides talking about the things we just mentioned, you might want to ask about driving. Dr. Spohr generally says it's in about two to four weeks when you get back to driving, but you have to have enough strength in that leg, and you can't be taking any narcotics. But you can always ask for their direction or your therapist on that, so kind of keep that in mind. You can talk about when you can return back to work, um, how to decrease pain medication if you're not sure how to do that, a variety of things. Okay, always check with Dr. Sporer. If you have any questions related to your surgery, always call their office. Somebody is always available 24 7, seven days a week, somebody's on call. But if you have questions related to any of your other health issues, um, it could be diabetes, high blood pressure, asthma, gout, whatever it is, always check with your primary. Your body gets stressed when you have surgery and stress hormones get released. Those things affect all the other things in your health history. So your primary can give you direction on anything else, so always check with them on that. Now, I thank you very much for joining us to have your surgery here at Edward, and I certainly hope that you had um, a fantastic experience with us, and thank you again.